Welcome to the Transanal Approach video series by the International Center for Colorectal and Urogenital Care at Children's Hospital Colorado. This video demonstrates the Suave procedure for rectosigmoid Hirschsprung disease. The Suave procedure is used to correct short segment Hirschsprung disease. Typically, babies born with this condition have no ganglion cells in the rectum and distal sigmoid. This operation has three goals. First, create a muscular cuff by removing the rectal mucosa. This protects the structures of the pelvis. Second, remove the aganglionic segment of the rectum and colon. And third, prevent fecal incontinence by protecting the pectinate zone within the anal canal. This operation is suitable for patients ages 1 to 6 months. In this demonstration, a 6-month-old male model is used. The patient is placed in the prone position. The anus is progressively dilated using several sizes of dilators that are not demonstrated in this video. The first HEGAR is number 8. The last HEGAR is 2 millimeters bigger than the appropriate HEGAR size for the age. It is essential not to overstretch the anal canal during this process and throughout the entire operation. Doing so may damage the anal sphincter and contribute to fecal incontinence. Next, the pectinate zone must be identified. Retractors are placed radially in the skin, distal to the anoderm. Identify the anoderm, the pectinate zone, and the rectal mucosa before proceeding. Adjust the retractors as needed and finish retractor placement. Protecting the pectinate zone is critical to this operation. Cuts made within this zone will damage the anal canal, resulting in fecal incontinence. The retractors are repositioned into the rectal mucosa one centimeter proximal of the pectinate zone. This folds the pectinate zone under the retractors, protecting it for the duration of the operation. Next, multiple traction sutures are placed circumferentially two centimeters proximal to the pectinate zone. Using steady traction, the anus is averted. Next, the muscular cuff will be created. The goal is to separate the rectal mucosa from the muscularis to create the muscular cuff. First, a partial thickness incision is made. The mucosa is incised circumferentially two centimeters from the pectinate zone, distal to the traction sutures. Care is taken to only dissect through the mucosa and not into the muscular layer to preserve the cuff. Firm and continuous traction of the sutures is used to expose the mucosa and facilitate the mucosectomy. The mucosa is gradually dissected from the muscular cuff using blunt dissection with a gauze pad. Although blunt dissection must be used for the duration of the mucosectomy, this process has been sped up in this demonstration. At this point in the operation, the transition zone is still well inside the peritoneal cavity. The mucosectomy will continue for the length of the pelvic portion of the rectum, usually 7 centimeters, until the peritoneal cavity is identified by the peritoneal reflection. Again, blunt dissection must be used for the duration of the mucosectomy. This process has been sped up in this demonstration.
the mucosa has now been separated from the muscularis and the muscular cuff created. Next, the muscular cuff will be opened, separating the muscular cuff from the mucosa that is attached to the sigmoid. Four pairs of traction sutures will be placed at the 3, 6, 9, and 12 o'clock positions. The muscular cuff is secured with two traction sutures per quadrant, creating two planes. A full thickness stitch, letter A, which includes the muscular cuff and mucosa. The second plane, letter B, is a partial thickness stitch created by a second traction suture which contains just the muscular cuff. Next, a partial thickness incision is made circumferentially between planes A and B. This separates the mucosa from the muscular cuff, allowing entry into the peritoneal cavity and visualization of the mesenteric vessels. At this point in the operation, the transition zone has been mobilized past the peritoneal reflection and is now just interior to the muscular cuff. Note the position of the blood supply of the mesentery. In preparation of the colectomy, several mesenteric vessels must be ligated 5 cm above the histological transition zone. Traction is applied to pull the rectum and colon through, exposing the vessels. The vessels are ligated. Several more ligations may be necessary. The transition zone and ganglionic colon should now be apparent. Evaluate the colon length and identify the transition zone before proceeding. A full thickness biopsy is made to positively identify the presence of ganglion cells and the absence of hypertrophic nerves. A square segment approximately one centimeter square is cut and removed, and the biopsy region is closed. Next, a posterior myectomy of the muscular cuff is made. Its purpose is to expand the diameter of the cuff, thereby preventing it from folding over or constricting the colon used for the pull through. The traction sutures are removed and the cuff is folded back inwards towards the pelvis. Next, the retractors are repositioned above or distal to the pectinate zone to visualize the whole anal canal and distal rectum for the colorectal anastomosis. In preparation for the anastomosis, identify the skin, anoderm, the pectinate zone, and the rectum. To begin the colorectal anastomosis, the normal ganglionic colon is secured to the rectal mucosa with a full thickness stitch. Next, the colectomy is performed, the specimen is removed, and sent to pathology. The colon is sutured circumferentially onto the rectal mucosa. Note the diagram to the left. 
Because it is usually an asymmetric anastomosis, it is essential to take care to match the two different sizes of the lumen evenly. Finally, the retractors are gently removed.